Guys, welcome back to another wonderful episode of the wonderful R City ZSL podcast. And again, if you guys are watching me here, uh, you know, on the TOEFL ITP, the video, the Facebook page, man, I just want to say thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, we're on fire. We're on fire with these videos. And again, you guys know how I do. I do just half the questions. So you have some practice too. I'm uploading these onto my blog and everything. And I'm just happy to start pumping out a lot of this content. So in saying that, people, if you want me to pump out more written expression, which is going to be coming, make sure you follow me on my, uh, on my Instagram, okay? Because I actually post some really awesome questions on there for some of my uh, followers and stuff like that. Uh, the videos will continue going up, Facebook page, especially on my Instagram, little snippets. So maybe you might make a decision and you might want to be, you know, uh, purchased a course or whatever it may be. So there's a lot of good stuff that will be coming out and you're going to see a lot of it too. So huh, guys, with that being said, okay, I said a whole bunch of nothing, but let's get into electromagnetic radiation. So this is a three paragraph format, man. I am excited about this one because it's going to be good. So here we go. According, yes, according to the passage, ultraviolet radiation from the sun. Let me put on my air because it is hot as hell in here. Uh, according to the passage, ultraviolet radiation from the sun, what does it do? Okay. Now, what we have to do is look at the first paragraph. Now, Although only a small percentage of electromagnetic radiation that is emitted by the sun is ultraviolet radiation, the amount that is emitted would be enough to cause severe damage to most forms of life on Earth. Were it at all, okay, to reach the surface of Earth, okay? There it is. So what can be informed by this, okay? Number one, or A, is causing severe damage to the Earth's ozone layer? Is it causing damage to it? Okay, if you guys are a little bit confused about that, continue reading. The next one, is only a fraction of the sun's electromagnetic radiation? Number three, as you see on the screen, or C, creates electromagnetic radiation? And of course, D, always reaches Earth. No, not all of it always reaches because if it did, there would be no life here on Earth because there's just too much radiation. The ozone layer protects us, right? So in saying that, what we have here is obviously you looking back very quickly on A, but we have B and C as two of the best answers. Is only a fraction of the sun's electromagnetic radiation or creates electromagnetic radiation. So again, ultraviolet, ultraviolet radiation from the sun creates electromagnetic radiation. Let's go back to this. Although only a small percentage of electromagnetic radiation comes from the sun, okay? Now, is ultraviolet. So only a small percentage of electromagnetic is ultraviolet. Okay, and that amount, if it were to come here to planet Earth, it would just destroy everything. Okay, so let's go back again. It's only a fraction of the sun's electromagnetic radiation. That is your answer. Okay, that's your answer. Why? Well, it says here, a small percentage of electromagnetic radiation is ultraviolet radiation. So the ultraviolet, oh, ugh, I hate this. I hate saying electromagnetic. Just, I just stumble over it ugh, all the goddamn time. Okay. Ultraviolet radiation from the sun, okay, is only a fraction of the sun's electromagnetic radiation. <laughs> Boom. That's how you stop stumbling over your damn words. That means B is your answer or number two on the screen if you guys are looking at it, okay? So I hope that makes sense. It doesn't create it, it just is. Now, is causing severe damage to the ozone layer? Uh, it doesn't say anything about that, but let's hear, look, it does. Fortunately, all of the sun's ultraviolet radiation does not reach the earth because of a layer of oxygen called the ozone layer. Okay, there it is. And then we go into number two, which, mean, which says encircling. And line five, which basically means line two, is closest in meaning to A, rotating, B, attacking, okay? C, raising, D, surrounding. So when we hear the word encircling, we know that it is like revolving, okay? 
Now, is it revolving in a way that it is rotating or is it surrounding? It's not attacking, it's not raising. When we see circle, we have to think of rotation. We have to think of surrounding. Those are the two words. So you're going to have to make educated guess. And it says here, fortunately, all of the sun's UV radiation does not reach the earth because of a layer of oxygen called the ozone layer. And circling the earth in the stratosphere at an altitude of about 15 miles above earth. Okay, so what this ozone layer does, it, observe, it absorbs the sun's UV and prevents it from reaching earth. Okay, so does that mean it is rotating? Is this, uh, is the U, I'm sorry, is the ozone layer, is it rotating or is it surrounding? So I want you to think, you got three seconds. If you pick D, surrounded, it is the answer. So good job, congratulations. It surrounds, it's not, it's not rotating, okay? Because if it was rotating, and the next thing you know, this specific you know, ozone layer ends up like dissipating, we would be in big trouble, okay? This is what's happening obviously in Australia. Well, not so much, just because I don't know why, to be honest with you. I don't know why it's so high there, but yeah, I don't know, I forgot about my science. Anywho. Let's keep it going. Number three, it is stated in the passage that the ozone layer, what does it do? A, enables UV radiation to reach Earth? No, it doesn't enable it, okay? Reflects ultraviolet radiation? C, shields the Earth from ultraviolet radiation? And D, reaches down to the Earth. Now, remember, ozone layer does not come down to Earth. Okay, it's in the stratosphere, 15 miles above Earth. Enables ultraviolet radiation to reach Earth. If it did, we would all be dead. So A is gone, D is gone. Does it reflect the ultraviolet radiation back into space? No, it shields, it surrounds the Earth and it protects us from getting that UV radiation. There it is. That's how you break it down. And that's literally me and my previous knowledge. I didn't even have to read anything, so. Anywho, according to the passage, an ozone molecule. Ah, okay, so what's an ozone molecule? Now, let's just go read this because it says three oxygen molecules, uh, which is, uh, try, oh shit, fuck chemistry. Uh, three oxygen molecules, <laughs> more oxygen atoms than the usual oxygen molecule. Bleh, whatever, let's just get out of here. Okay, let's get to this. All right. Ozone is a form of oxygen in which each molecule consists of three atoms instead of two atoms, usually found in an oxygen molecule. Okay, so that means an oxygen molecule. And let's go back, unless I read over that too quickly, all right? An ozone molecule, okay? So that's what we're looking for, ozone molecule. Now, ozone forms in the stratosphere in a process that is initiated by UV radiation from the sun. Okay, so I'm looking for the ozone molecule. Hmm, okay, here we go, got it. The sun splits oxygen molecules with two atoms into free oxygen atoms, and each of the unattached oxygen atoms then joins up with an oxygen molecule. What the hell? to form ozone. Okay, there it is. Oh God, I hate this BS. Okay, let me say that one more time so I don't confuse you guys. Sun splits oxygen molecules with two atoms into free oxygen atoms, okay? So it splits it with two atoms and each of these unattached oxygen atoms then joins up with an oxygen molecule. So we have two free oxygen atoms and they join with one oxygen molecule to form ozone. So let's go back down to the answers. Oh, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. Here we go. So ozone molecule consists of three oxygen molecules? No, contains more oxygen atoms than the us usual oxygen molecule does? Yes, consists of two oxygen atoms? No. Oh, well, it, it consists of two, correct. But it has an oxygen molecule too. All right, so ooh, that could be really tricky. So if you guys chose that one, you'd be like, no, but it does consist, it does. 
but then it also has, uh, I'm sorry, contains more oxygen atoms than the usual oxygen molecule does. And it contains the same number of atoms and uh, no, it doesn't. So B is the answer. I know that's a really difficult one, guys. It is because uh, some of you would say, but it does consist of two oxygen atoms. But in B, it says contains more oxygen atoms than the usual oxygen molecule does. So do I believe you're going to have a, a crazy ass math, ridiculous question, chemistry based BS question on the test? Probably not. Okay. Especially in the new test. All right. This is relatively a bit old. All right. So do not freak out about that. But in this case, again, look at it. You got two atoms. They're free oxygen. They join with this one. There it is. That's what I would do. That's how I would pick it. It just doesn't consist only of two oxygen atoms. So I wouldn't go with that just because on that basis. All right. And the last question that I'm going to be diving into, the word free in line 10 could best be replaced by, now our vocabulary terms is liberal, gratuitous, unconnected, and emancipated. Now, let's go over here. Free, free, free. Where are you? No, I just read free, didn't I? Uh, yeah, free oxygen atoms. Yeah, in line 10. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So there it is. Free oxygen atoms. So what does free mean? Okay, free oxygen atoms, meaning they are no longer uh, taken, if that makes sense. They're no longer connected. So it would be unconnected. C is your answer, right? It doesn't say anything about liter liberal, gratuitous. Uh, gratuitous means, you know, someone's giving you something for free, okay? These things are just are free, <laughs> or they end up being free. Emancipated is completely wrong. And liberal, uh, I don't know if liberal and free, I don't know if those two go together. So anyways, again, liberal doesn't even make sense in this damn passage. Got it? So with that being said, guys, man, I just want to say thank you so much for tuning in to another wonderful ESL podcast and another reading. There are five more questions for you, so make sure that you do them and I will be waiting for you, okay? So that being said, thanks for tuning in to another wonderful TOEFL ITP reading video. There's so much more to come, so you better stay tuned. Over and out.